All right, guys, welcome back to Mr. Poe's Frame. We are back on a job site we haven't been to in a long time. We finally got some doors in. So today's show is going to be how to install an exterior door by yourself. It's something that I do quite often. Um, but before we get started, if you are interested in designing your own post frame home, barnuminium, shop, garage, whatever the case is, reach out to us, design at Mr. Post Frame. We're designing all over the country uh, for different people. Our plans are awesome. They're really detailed. There's a lot of structural details. So when you get our plans, you're going to be able to build from your plans or your builder is going to be able to look at them and know how to build it uh, according to the way we build. So another thing for you guys out there that want to self build, uh, we have a Patreon group that is just for self builders. We talk about different topics every month. We have lives. Uh, we bring on special guests. It's a great community, other self builder builders where you can share your journey. Um, so check that out. It's a great uh, community to be a part of. So let's go ahead and jump in to how to install an exterior door. All right, so we're gonna get going here. This is a post frame building that we're installing this exterior door in. The concrete is in. So, a couple of really important things when you're installing this by yourself. You wanna make sure that that concrete is perfectly level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my level, um, grind off what I need to to make it perfectly level. Concrete is never that way. I shouldn't say never, but a lot of times it's not. Secondly, I'm gonna find out which side of this door is my jam side and I'm going to level that with shims before I install the door. So I know when I put that door in that pocket, I can slide it over against my shims and that is perfectly level. And that is going to alleviate most of your problems if you do those two things right off the bat. So let's go ahead, level out the concrete and get our jam side uh, built up the way we want it. frame to the rough opening on the plans which is 38 and a half. If I measure the door, it's 37 and a half. So that's an inch difference. That means I have a half inch of play on both sides. So because I'm installing this by myself, what I like to do is I like to shrink that rough opening down so I have about a quarter inch on each side of the door play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, piece of plywood and I'm going to level this down the jam side and by doing that then I can stick my hinge side of the door up against there screw it in place and I know my bottom sill and my jam side are going to be nice level and plumb which is going to make this door insulation easy so pull back the house wrap I'm going to nail this in uh, make sure it's nice and level or plumb I guess I should say and then uh, we will cover the grade board and the edge of the concrete with um, some flashing tape. I use zip tape and then we'll get the head jam prepared and we will get the door in. It's already pretty level or plumb as it should be. So what I'm gonna do is just throw this in there. It's pretty much money. All 
right, so now I'm going to do the same thing with the head jam. You can really do that uh, first. I know that uh, that's about an, uh, probably about an inch higher than I want it. So I'm just going to use a couple pieces of plywood, shim it down, flash, and the door goes in. I think I'm finally ready to set the door in. One thing that additional that you shouldn't have to do, because you should have your doors before you do your metal, is I had to trim this back. So dry fitted it, trimmed this. Hopefully it's where I need it. So now I'm gonna run a bead of sealant along the edge of the two door jams across the head. And then read your manufacturer's instructions on your door. Um, it says to run two beads right here. So I'm gonna mark where I gotta run the beads. And then hopefully we'll set this door in place. plumbed this uh, hinge side jam, if I push that all the way up against there, that should make the door plumb hypothetically, which we'll find out here in a second. See how we're doing so far. Good, we're up tight. Be perfect once I screw that in. Boom. Perfect. Love it. Now we need to go in and do that side. Alright, so I got this in here and I'm looking at this reveal right here. And it just gets a it was a little tight down here. So if you drive a shim, you know, somewhere right around your uh, bottom hinge or a little bit up, it'll help kick the bottom of that door over. And so I throw one in and then drive one in right here. And that essentially moves the bottom of the door that way a little bit. So right now. All I'm going to do is make the reveals look nice, shim this up, and put screws through. So we look pretty, pretty darn good right now. Um, we might be just a hair low on this side of the door, which I can uh, try to shim that up just a hair. But I'm pretty happy with this so far. So I have my reveal looking really nice over here. Uh, I just double checked this one up here. It was a little low on this left side, maybe like a 16th to an eighth. So I just shim that up. That's why if you read the directions, you want to put um, a couple healthy lines of sealant down. So if you have to shim up one side, you're still going to get a good seal there. You can also run a bead across here. 
depending on what your uh, finished floor is going to be, but we should not have a problem. Now we're going to come in here and I like to put a screw above and below the lock set and at least at the top and bottom. So I'll pull this seal back and I'll hide the screws behind there. You just want to make sure you're pushing in on the door. So that you're all the way up against the outside. And then I'll put shims in, run the screws in. So as I put shims and screws in, I'm just opening and closing the door, um, getting it to look the way I want it to look. I probably will add one right here. It looks like it kind of has a dip, so I'll probably add a, a shim there. Got the whole door screwed in except for the top. I do like to put one shim right in the middle and then just screw that top jam in. Um, so I'm gonna do that now. But you can see that if you start out with a level sill and a plumb hinge side of your door jam, installing the door really isn't that bad. So once you get that done, you just have to check your reveal opening and closing it and putting your screws in behind that weather seal. So we'll get that one in and then uh, we'll go ahead and put sealant where the door manufacturer calls for it and then this should be um, pretty much done. We'll cut all these shims off right away so people don't catch on them, that kind of stuff. So right here on the bottom of your sill, there's usually like four to five caps. If you pop those off, there's a little screw head, which I don't have a screwdriver on me, unfortunately. Sometimes I have to go to the trailer. But you can raise and lower the height of this jam so it seals better on the bottom of your door. I can tell that this side is a little bit low. So I'm gonna raise that up. I'll get a screwdriver and then raise this up so just when the door closes, there's a little bit more resistance there. Now I feel like I got a little bit better seal on the bottom of the door. So we ran a bead of sealant along here. You want to kind of get it pushed up in there because if water runs down it can get in. Sometimes get around in there, get around there if it's really windy. And then I am going to run another bead on the outside of the brick mold. Now that we got this door installed, I can run my J-trim down the side of the door. We can install our piece of metal. What we'll do now is I'll bring this down. I'm going to cut this and then I will tape it um, across the top of this door jam here. Then I'll have J-trim on the side, J-trim across the top with some silicone behind it. So we're up underneath the porch, but uh, even if water was get down here, it shouldn't get uh, behind this uh, door jam here, or this uh, brick mold. All right, so we have a little, I put this mainly on here to fix a couple holes in the house wrap. And then we ran this and it starts at the edge of the brick mold, goes back to the wall and up the wall. So the way we do our trim, you'll see we put J trim up to here, put our piece of steel in, and then we put a piece of J in that extends past this corner. 
So if any water does come down, it's gonna get into our J, it's gonna come out here. If somehow it gets up behind, it'll come down, hit this flashing and come out over the brick mold, hypothetically. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, it should come out over the brick mold. All right, so our customer provided these door handles and I will say it has the EZ symbol on it, which means easy installation. So we're hoping that's the case. Looks like the door's already notched out, except it seems like these are never notched out properly, but we'll find out. All right, I guess we will start with this guy right here. Obviously that needs to be on the inside, lock on the outside. Let's see if that's the right. It's already set to the right depth. Most of the time these lock sets, you can adjust the distance between the edge of your door and where your center, your bolt hole is. Um, this one's adjusted properly already. It's just gonna be in the bottom. Gonna make sure the rounded part's headed towards your door. That lines up perfect, fits right in there. That doesn't happen very often. A couple of Phillips screws. long screws. Got that in there, that works. So now we're going to take the strike plate, which is what the bolt hits on, and we'll place it right here in this spot. So one thing I like to do to make sure I put this you know exactly where I need to do. I'll shut the door and watch where this bolt hits right here and just kind of mark it with a pencil. Um, there won't be a lot of play here but I can move it up and down a little bit if I need to. Just kind of gives me an idea if I'm going to be, if you look at these, if I'm looking at these marks, the bolt is actually up a little bit higher which I think will be alright. anybody installs a lot of these and can tell me why deadbolt plates never fit inside door manufacturers notch out which this is kind of a poor job that I'm looking at but I never have any of these actually fit in this space these are always bigger so wouldn't you think the door manufacturers would increase the size of the spot they're routering out so luckily I have a bunch of chisels with me. I do have my pencil. I have to sharpen it. What kind of pencil is that, Paul? It's a Pika pencil. So now I have to try to make that look as nice as possible. At least it's not right at the edge. So I'm going to do that last. I'll install this part to make sure it's going to hit where it needs to hit. This says top right here, so I know that faces up. This actually fits in there nice and neat. Oh, there's a little slot. Slide that through there. Sometimes these come with a little ring you can put on there, but this looks like it's kind of built into this one. Kind of help keep it centered once it's tight. So that fits in that hole, so now I just gotta clean that up.
You need a couple really sharp um, chisels. And then you gotta take your time. If you wanted to really make this look nice, this didn't come uh, cut out the cleanest from the factory, I will say. Um, but what you can do is you can tape off your strike plates and then get some wood putty, fill that all in, let it dry, and then sand it off. And you can actually get a pretty nice um, finish. They do make some jigs that you can use if you have a router to do these. Um, I'm sure they have them for this size strike plate, I would imagine. But uh, that's how I do it. I just use a, some real sharp chisels, some small ones, and you have to take your time if you get in a hurry. Um, usually these wood jams are pretty, pretty soft and you can uh, break them out pretty easy. Go. It's done, Justin. All right, guys, so that's gonna be a wrap on installing this door and the lock set outside of this needing a good washing, which most uh, houses do after they're complete. Um, this went really well. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Um, as always, we appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, share us with your friends, and we will catch you on the next video.